Welcome to the Todd DeVoe Show, exploring the best ideas and lessons for leaders. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are at in this fine world. And I am super excited today to have a friend of mine um, on the show who I've known for a few years. The crazy part about it is, I mean, he's a couple years older than I am, but uh, we grew up um, in the same part of the world in Albany, New York area. And we both ended up here in Southern California. Uh, Tony, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thanks for pointing out that we grew up next to each other. Pretty close. And then a little older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let that go. Right? I mean, well, come on. It's fast. So, so <laughs> now, kind of background, though. I mean, the cool part about it is, is, is Tony, you, you come out to California um, you, you work as a paramedic firefighter, um, and, but that's, that's not where it ends. You get into leadership and the, but where you really thrive, where you where you made the biggest difference in, in the, in the society here in our community, um, was creating teams. Yeah. And I, I think, I think that's like one of the hardest things that you could do. Um, a friend of mine, uh, John, you know, John, you met John. Um, mm-hmm. he turned me on to a um john fontaine you, you turned me on to a tv show called uh the bear and it's about a restaurant uh, this guy comes it's young young uh hot shot um uh chef uh goes back to his family restaurant in uh in chicago and goes to this whole process of creating a team and it's really interesting so if you look at that you take a look at that tv show yes. but it had a lot of truths right yeah. and and so I, I like the contrast that you have between being able to develop your own team from the ground up and then getting the team that was given to you. And I want to talk about those contrasts, but yeah. before we do that, what is a team? Yeah. So, you know, Todd is, well, we'll talk about this, but you know, when you assemble a team, like anybody can assemble a team, let's just get that straight. Right. This is not about assembling team is we can assemble a team, but it has to be an effective team. And, you know, our vision, my vision of what that what that team is, is assembling a group of individuals, a group of individual talents, right, that will complement the team focused on achieving effectively, achieving the mission and going home at the end of the day. Assembling individuals to achieve an emission, a mission effectively going home at the end of the day. That's that's the team. No matter whether it's a tactical team, an operational team, an administrative team, a set of department heads, a fire leadership team, a, 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 a tactical SWAT medic team, teams. So we, we hear this a lot. <clears throat> you know, um, I have my military background and then law enforcement and fire, um, you know, working in those agencies. Um, you know, so we've seen seen that kind of move around in that paramilitary situation. Yeah. But when we take a look at, like, say, emergency management, for instance, um, or a public works department, or uh, you know, the uh, recreation department, mm-hmm. uh, it's a little lot. It's it's a less paramilitary, right? You don't have yeah. like this. I'm the chief, and then you're my. It's it's a little bit different. Um, what what is the difference between a team and say, like, the fire department and a team at Parks and Rec? Yeah. So it, Todd, here's the difference It's mission. That's the difference, right? Is whether, whether you're a military team, a, a fire service team, uh, you are um, a, you know, a group of department heads from, from a city, a county, you're a public uh, uh, works department, like, like you said, Todd, it's, it's all about mission. It's effectively achieving that mission. You know, if you look at this every single day in major league sports, right? We're all sports fans. Most of us are, right? And and every year they assemble the team, right? And, and how do they measure effectiveness? Wins. It's simple. It's win-loss columns, right? Right. In local government, is we don't generally focus on win-loss columns, but we focus on what is our stated mission. And, and achieving that mission effectively, right? What is, what's effective, right? And that's generally based upon benchmarks and metrics set for the agency, right? We do it safely, right? And we do it as a team. At the end of the day, 
is we're still a team, right? We're not hurting anybody physically or mentally and mission accomplished high five, right? right. And then we're on, we're on to the next mission. I mean, that's really what it is. So I, I, I want to, I want to get a little dark here for a second and then we go back up to, to some of the great successes that you had. So I, I've seen, you know, departments in my area at least in orange county mm -hmm. uh, a few of them in the past fire and police um have done voter no confidence on their chiefs um and that and i guess in my estimation of that is <clears throat> i don't think it's a it's the technical skills that the these the members of the department are upset about mm -hmm. it's more of that leadership skill yeah um how do you lose the faith of your of your members uh when you are uh, when they take it that far to take a vote of no confidence. Yeah, certainly. So, so Todd, just, you know, kind of my background, you mentioned this earlier, fire service, law enforcement, emergency management, you know, leading small tactical teams, leading uh, regional teams of police and fire chiefs toward, you know, in, in these regional projects that I've been involved in um, is when you're selecting leaders and, and, and you're talking about chiefs of departments, Right. Leaders are all levels of the organization, just not at the highest level, but that is the chief leader, if you will. Um, it's about leading people, and often it's about having an awareness of the tactical skills, right, that happens at the street level, fire service, law enforcement, emergency management. But it's about being able to lead people, right? And, and, and that's where you get the votes and no confidence, right? Um, and it, whereas the the operational the operators if you will the teams don't feel that the leaders representing them well and leading them towards a vision right towards accomplishing mission that's where you end up getting that one of the things i thought i if you don't mind i thought i would do today Please. is be okay with this is i was going to read a couple chapters out, out of a leadership book and a team management book right is that okay with you no it's Four not chapters. <laughs> well, no because here's the thing is todd as you know this and the listeners that are on there today know that you can't become a leader or develop or, or de build a team based upon a book or right. a class. It takes grit and hard work, sustained hard work to build those teams. It's not a book and it's not a class, right? It's, it's right. not. It's more than that. So your experience, you have built teams. And, mm -hmm. I, and I want to get into that first. Let's Let's first talk about the team that you built from the ground up and, and that experience. Um, so you get hired. It was the city of Riverside, right? The city of Riverside, hired, yes. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. and you got and you got to deal with to be able to say, I want to build my own team. Let's let's walk through that story. Yeah. So again, you know, a blessed to be able to you know here's you know with, with developing teams, it's just not building and developing teams. It's a lot of times you 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 assume an existing team. Right, you go in as a leader or a manager to become a leader, and you have an existing team that you need to develop and build and and and, and uh, continue to to set vision and build mission. I would have the opportunity, which doesn't happen very often, to go into an organization with it was one and a half employees, not even that. It was it was like 1.3 employees. It was me and, and, and a uh, and a one third time uh, employee to build an emergency management organization. Um, so yeah, my bad, no, 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 no team exists. Right. But the great thing and the blessed thing was being able to select each and every member and in selecting that member, one of the things that we often do is we look for right fit, right? Mm. You've heard that before we hire for fit. We do, but don't hire for the wrong fit. You're trying to, to build these, a puzzle and those puzzle pieces are all different shapes and sizes because we want to complement the existing team. We want we want to complement Tony's strengths going to complement the strengths on, for Todd that are lower on the list. Todd's higher on the list strengths are going to complement my lower on that list strengths. Um, so we want to make sure we're not going to hire a bunch of if we hire a bunch of Tonys and put them in an the executive conference room to make a decision we're all going to agree on everything. We're not bringing all this dynamic, this diversity uh, to, to the table. If that's what we need to hire for. So I, my, I had the opportunity to select each and every, when I say select is as the team was built, we selected new team members. It wasn't, wasn't a Tony thing. It wasn't a me thing. 
it was selecting each and every team member. So we really can make sure that we could bring in what is going to complement, what are we trying to find now? Not another clone of the last person we hired, but somebody's going to complement that last hire, that last team member. So to contrast that, you get hired at the city of Ontario and you you yeah. inherit a team. You inherited, I inherited um, <clears throat> as, as a, uh, as a um, uh, director is I inherited four or five divisions of people. Um, you know, I inherited teams of teams, right? And so I don't know if it's any harder or any easier. The team is already there, but you still have to develop that team. You have to go in. One of the processes that we use, you mentioned this earlier, is for Jacob Green and Associates that I principally work for in California, is the process what, which I applied in Ontario, um, even before Jacob Green and Associates um, was Jacob Green and Associates, is we, we use APA, a, API process, assess, plan, and implement. Same thing, you know, going into the city of Ontario is you assess, assess the, uh, the team, the existing conditions, assess where the current state of affairs, where do you want to be, put together a plan of attack, right, an operations plan, and then you implement, you execute. And that's what I did, did in Ontario, is we had teams of teams, right? Some work really, really well together, some not so much. And you have to always look at assessing individual team members for strengths and, well, I don't really want to call them weaknesses, is we all have strengths. Some are very high in the list, right? Some are number 10s. Some are lower in the list, aka weaknesses. And we need to make sure that, yeah, Todd, you know where I fit, what are my strengths and weaknesses, and I know yours, so that we can work together and have this cognitive diversity in developing an organizationally diverse team, and again, working towards a very defined mission with the leader's intent and a vision right in front of me. And that's what we had to do in Ontario. We had to do in Ontario. So there's two schools of thoughts when you look at strength and weaknesses, and and I'll tell you what what my my opinion is here in a second. Um, so you have those that like okay, you know the the, the strengths of this individual yeah. member of your team, and then like you see that they have some weaknesses. <clears throat> excuse me, and um, in some cases you put time and effort into developing those weaknesses and the strengths, and 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 you forget about them sharpening their their saw when it comes to their strengths and so then they become almost like mediocre at both right mm -hmm. uh that's my opinion um so my my thing is you find those strengths and you work along with those and really sharpen those those strengths that those person mm -hmm. has and you and the other team member who has those those you know the strengths to where this guy's mediocre yeah. they, they do combine and create a whole do you believe in that or do you believe in like having somebody have you know, work on their weaknesses. Yeah, I know. A, a great, great segue. And this, this is Tony Dungy's uh, coach uh, uh, business management uh, thinking is focus on the strengths. Your, your ROI, your return on investment is highest. When you assemble the team, focus on sharpening the sword, focus on the strengths. Your return on investment is so much higher than that. Yeah, we have to make sure that we're taking the rough edges off those strengths that, that we consider weaknesses. And that's to your point is weakness probably isn't the best term to use with, right. with staff members, right? Are those strengths that aren't as strong, strong as other strengths? Your ROI is, is on the strengths. When you assemble a football team, right? You assemble a punter, you assemble a quarterback. You don't expect the quarterback to punt the ball. <laughs> Why? I mean, I mean, <clears throat> that's such a simple analogy. Their strength is in quarterbacking. Right. Don't expect the guy to punt, right? So when you assemble our team, is we need to, but we need to understand what the strengths are, and, and not hey, you know, Todd's got these weaknesses, man. He's kind of a problem. No, he's not. It is he's got the strengths. Your strengths overcome his lower strengths, and my strengths overcome other person's lower strengths. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big advocate for. Focusing time and effort so much on the weaknesses. So when you're looking at developing that team, put that team together, and you you find the people that have 
we'll go back to sports. You know, mm-hmm. you can I add in whatever team, whatever, whatever <laughs> thing that works for you, right? So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll stick, let's stay with let's we'll stay with football, right? So you you find your quarterback, um, you know, proficient at, at that job. Um, you you have people proficient at, at their mm-hmm. other positions that they have, um, and then you go out into the field. <clears throat> How do you get them to work together as that as that team? I, I also use the the analogy of the orchestra, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you have everybody that play plays their instruments well, but how do you get them to play well together? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, you know, this kind of goes back to this assessment of individual. We do assessments of organizations. We do executive teams, individuals, is we need to make sure that we do an assessment of the behaviors, the skills, the strengths, the AK weaknesses of the individual team members to make sure that we're piecing them together and that piecing them together is often situational. It's often based upon, yeah, our mission is this, but today our objective or goal is this. And, and we're going to be, you know, whether, whether we're, we're in, a, uh, in the red zone, Todd, if you will, um, we've got, you know, defense on the team, offense on the team. It's what are we trying to do in the moment, right? And, and, and we're going to, we have this 26-man roster that we're going to bring, we're going to bring, you know, 11, 12 guys to the team, to the field rather, um, depending on what the situation is at the time. And that's going to change, right? Just like we do in emergency management, we're, we're in response and recovery. We're in a fire operation. We're in defense mode. We're in offensive mode. Is the players, the tactics change, and the players are going to always change. We just need to make sure, probably the point, the point we need to make, Todd, is we need to manage our human resources, our human capital, well in the moment. How do you let somebody go? So, you know, again, kind of going back to, um, you, you, we talked about football is um, right now, I think I live in ho- kind of hockey town, USA, if you will. I'm just outside of Denver, Colorado, and, and we are in hockey bliss right now. So we'll kind of go back, maybe the hockey and the baseball analogy. But um, w- when you look at assembling a team and maintaining that team, and I'll kind of use again a sports analogy, maybe not how we do things always in government, is is you, you, you buy, sell, trade, and develop people, right? You, you develop from AAA to, to, to the big leagues, right? You buy, sell, and trade, right? Not that we buy, sell, and trade government employees, but how do we let somebody go is, yeah, it's hard. For most of us, um, we're, we're emotionally intelligent people. That's freaking painful, right? But we have to worry about a team. We have a team to worry about. Right. We, we have a vision and mission, but we have to do what's right for the team. Sometimes we're doing what's right for the person we're letting go. Right. Right. Because perhaps it, 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 it's a performance thing where they're going to get themselves hurt. And, and to keep them safe and their, their family having that person going home at night is we got to make hard decisions. But that's what we do as leaders. Right. How do you re- how do you retain somebody on the, on the flip side of it? You always have to develop, and this is this continuous improvement thing. Is um, that you know we, we on Todd and you and I have talked about this before. Is always focusing on continual improvement for the agency, the jurisdiction, the team, the individuals. Is you retain them, a by treating them right, right by treating them right. And what is right? Rights being fair, fair and consistent, right, and then uh, always developing them. If I'm not treat, tried, if you don't treat me fairly and you're not consistent with me and the rest of the team, yeah, I'm going to lose my enthusiasm, right? You're going you're gonna to lose my desire. Um, but also is I need to be developed. I need to be, always be focused as you are as my leader on what's next, what's next. I have to have a what's next. So as a – now bring us back to, to the whole team. So outside the individuals. Um, you develop your team, you do, you have a goal set, you meet that goal. How do you know what's next? Yeah. So that's having a strategy, you know, the, the strategy being the, the strategy for the jurisdiction, the strategy for the department the strategy for, and I like, stra- I like the written strategy side and you know, that is, and, and, and then having that performance plan, right. For the employee. Well, you know, when you, you do these annual or these monthly, depending if they're on probation or not, you do these monthly evaluations that generally 
if I can say this on, on the air, Todd, is they suck most of the time. Can I say that? I <laughs> yes, did. Sorry absolutely. about that. Is you know, but they have to they have to lead to something, and, and having very clear set between you know Todd and Tony, a leader and, and subordinate, if you will, is we need to agree on goals and objectives, and that that's the answer right there. And then we need to meet weekly, monthly, quarterly, right? Making sure that you're you're working towards achieving those goals as an individual or a team. But I'm also I'm giving you what Todd what you need to uh, to achieve achieve those goals. Apologize about the hands, Todd. You know, a fellow uh, or an Italian from New York. Sorry about that. No problem. I, <clears throat> so. Yeah. I, I, and, and I would I wouldn't uh, take any other way if, if if you weren't talking with your hands I figured you weren't talking, um, <laughs> you, you know. So let's talk about evaluation here for a second, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so you evaluate the team, right, the performance based upon the goals objectives that you set for your team, but then you evaluate the individual and how they're working within the team. Now, I always hated the whole like, you know, self evaluation form that you have to fill out before you give it to your to your boss. I feel that was, I feel it's kind of uh, cheating for the for the organization to say okay <laughs> evaluate yourself and i'm going to write your evaluation based yes upon, yes you, yes, you know, yes um how do you make evaluate because i i actually believe totally this is just from years mm -hmm. i always believe that the the performance evaluations had to be done um you know even in the military although in the military they weighed a little bit differently mm -hmm. um but performance evaluations had to be done it was this process that everybody went through it, it was seemed more of a show than of anything for real and everybody walks away with, you know, okay, great. I have here's my evaluation. Mm -hmm. Put it in a drawer. Wait till next year. Then I have to get another one done. How do you make the evaluation process meaningful for the individual, not just for the team? Yeah, certainly. So, Todd, it can't just be that piece of paper, right? That piece of paper that goes in a P file, personnel file, that we look at maybe a week before the next performance evaluation is done in another uh, 12 months. It has to be meaningful. And I'll kind of tie this to emotional intelligence. In, in, in using a self-evaluation form is emotional intelligence. It starts with self-awareness, right? I, I, am I right on that one? I mean, yeah, it's about self-awareness. If used properly, the self-evaluation can, it should be, it's about self-awareness, but you also need to be benchmarking. If I'm doing a, a, uh, a self-evaluation, I should be looking at, looking at benchmarking against my last evaluation as well, right? I set goals and objectives. Part of my self-evaluation is where am I at, right? Did I achieve goals X, Y, and Z, right? And, and if I achieved this, why? If I didn't achieve this or I achieved this partially, I need to know why in a self-evaluation, but my leader, my boss needs to know why well as well, because perhaps it's something that we need to work on. Hey, the budget wasn't there. I didn't, I didn't achieve this goal, right? right? Or Matt, you didn't approve my time off. I couldn't go to that class. It's your right. fault, right? But objectively, that's the thing is it's got to be objective, not subjective. But it can be a tool if done right, or it's just a piece of paper, check in a box and a bunch of boxes. So bringing it back to the team and the team building, <clears throat> Do you use the evaluation process to help build teams or is that separate completely from, from that process? Yeah. So what we focus on, I say we is, is, um, is myself, our team, no matter what kind of evaluation we're doing or, or an assessment we're doing or team building we're doing is we have, we have to know the current state of affairs, right? That takes an assessment, right? Be it verbal assessment, be it interviews, be it group meeting, team meetings, be it actual surveys where you're answering questions, um, you have to have a current state of affairs because how do you know you're developing or building if you don't have a benchmark, a starting point? So the long-winded answer to your question is, yeah, we do assessments, organizational assessments, jurisdictional team individuals. So when somebody hires your, your company, you come in, you assess what they do. Do you assess the leaders first or the teammates first or both together? How does that go? Walk me through that process. I hire yeah. you to, to assess my team and to help develop some stuff. What do you do? Yeah. So you really have to start at the organizational level because <clears throat> we, we need to identify at the very highest level, if you will, Todd, 
is what are the challenges? What, you know, where is the current state of affairs? Where are the gaps? You know, kind of looking look like a SWOT analysis is where are the challenge, where are the strengths, where are the challenges at the highest? Because that's that's where that's where the organizational mission and vision is, right? And then you've got to get down to the to the line level. Uh, the guy or girl sweeping the floor is part of the team, so we need to make sure that we understand where do they fit into the into the team, into the puzzle, into driving towards mission, um, leading towards vision. So we have to start at the, the, the highest level to get down to the, if you will, in the pyramid, if you will, at the lowest level. You have to do an assessment or we're going to miss something, right? We have, to, we have to know what are we trying to do? What are we trying to solve? We need to move the needle, but where's the needle at? So, okay, so like, I hire you, you come in, you assess me, you assess my team, you see what we're doing, what the processes are. What do I get at the end of, of the process? Like, how do I know that we're successful through this training process? You get improvement. I mean, I mean, that's really what we're trying to do, right? Right. Is, is an improvement, again, I kind of going back to the very beginning of the discussion, Todd, is we won't get improvement based upon one session, based upon one survey, based upon a book or a class or, or a seminar is you've got to, to, to this compendium of continued improvement. You have to package it all up. And the, and the improvement, we, we want to see improvement while we're working with you. We want to check in with you later, right? Because improvement doesn't stop, right? It doesn't stop at the end of a seminar, the end of, end of a chapter in a book, the end of a workshop or a survey. You're going to continue to set, A, set goals and objectives, B, set benchmarks and, and metrics, and then C, drive towards those, continually drive towards those, even after we've done what we need to do and you're still working on developing the team and the mission. So then you have, and I'm going to throw a bunch of acronyms out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have the KPIs, the CQIs, the CQIs. Yeah, right? yeah. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> so you use all this alphabet soup, you throw it to the thing. And then, uh, uh, then those are your measurements. Is that how you could, is that how you measure? Improvement? Yeah, ab absolutely. So look, Todd is I live in Colorado, right? It, I hike, I climb. Here's the thing. You just set, don't set out on a Saturday morning to climb a mountain, right? You have a goal, climb the mountain. You have objectives to meet certain, you know, altitudes or, or latitudes or plateaus in that process. And then you've identified performance indicators, right? Performance indicators, where do I need to be at a certain point in time? How do I know I'm making progress, right? How do I know I'm going to meet, meet my goal at, you know, when the weather is still good at a certain time so I can get back down right before the weather turns on me or, or the it gets dark? So, yeah, we, we have to make sure, and sometimes they should be, you already have KPIs and, and, and performance benchmarks hopefully identified. If not, we can help you work on that. But you have to have those identified. So in, in business, it's easy, right? You either bring money in or you don't, right? It's, yeah. it's a simple, you, that's how you can tell if you're doing a good job or not. Yeah. In sports, you win or lose. Um, how do we know we're doing a good job when it comes to emergency management? Yeah, so that's great, Ty. So sports team is win and loss columns. In businesses, it's whether you are successful and profitable or you're not, right? You go out of business. Um, is in emergency management, we should be having working off of key performance indicators as well or benchmarks based upon threats and hazards, right? And and uh, setting uh, certain goals and objectives that are overarching for how the city or the county operates during times of emergencies, and then. As you know, when we activate an incident command post, we activate an emergency operations center, a crisis management center, is we're going to put together a what? Whether it's on a grease board, on a yellow tablet, or on a fancy computer program, is an operational plan based upon the situation we have in front of us. And what are we doing, right? Goals and objectives, control objectives, strategic objectives, management objectives. And are we achieving those in the time frame? Right? Are we uh, are we performing the rescues? Are, are we getting right uh, control lines around a fire? 
right? And, and we're going to have benchmarks for that. Sometimes they're preset and trigger points. That, that's how we're going to know, right? And, and, we're, and the other way we're going to know too is we're going to get feedback, aren't we? Right. We're going to get feedback from everybody. Well, what I think is funny on the law enforcement example is um, you do saturation patrols and there's no crime, right? And then the question is, is there no crime because there's no crime mm. or is there no crime because of the saturation patrols? Yeah. And then you have, um, you know, budget minded city council members or whatever saying, oh, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, mm-hmm. let's cut the police department now because there's no crime. But, you know, and same thing with fire prevention and stuff like this. And and I always find this interesting that, that, that we see that, that dichotomy of where do we go with budget compared to what we're doing? Yeah. Um, you can do KPIs help with with the budget side and we're going to have to go here in a minute, but I'm yeah, sure yeah, certainly. Part. Yeah. You, you have to have KPIs, right? I'm going to spend my budget, our money, our taxpayer money. And these are our performance indicator indicators that are focused on achieving goals and objectives, but word of caution with KPIs, numbers are just numbers. Numbers have, numbers have to lead towards improvement. There's, in, 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 in the world we live in, there's outputs and outcomes. Outputs are numbers, KPIs. Outcomes are what the outputs or the numbers, KPIs, lead to. Outputs, Tony, I'm gonna let you. I, I'm gonna let you leave with with the with the last with the last word. Um, I appreciate yeah. everything that you're doing and, and the work that you're doing. Uh, two things is. Yep. I want you to make sure people know how to get a hold of you. Yeah. But I want to leave you with the last word. What's a, what's one piece of advice that you can give to all the emergency managers and and public safety personnel um, out there in the world that are trying to make uh, things better and lead the team? Yeah, certainly. So great, great uh, closing point, Todd. Is um, a message out of our uh, leadership uh, in crisis uh, teachings uh, is to most importantly is be visible, be, be present, right? Leading teams, leadership. Be visible, be present, be composed, be strong, right? Be the strength that the team uh, leads, uh, looks up to. Be vocal, be heard. And lastly, be resilient. Model behavior for others. So really the four things, be visible, be composed, be vocal, be resilient. Um, and then how you can get a hold of me, jacobgreenandassociates.com. Associates, common spelling, dot com. Uh, I can be reached at Tony at jacobgreenassociates.com, where you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, that's my closing thoughts so much. Thanks for having me. And just, uh, you know, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, our, our listeners and viewers, uh, again, it, there's no secret sauce in developing teams. It takes hard work and grit. It's not a class or a book. You got to get after it. You got to practice, continually improve. Absolutely. Thank you, Tony, for your time today. Hey everybody, thank you so much for spending time with me today here and, and Tony. Um, it's it's always a pleasure to be around. And please follow us on on your favorite podcast player, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and uh, also on Bullhorn, right? Don't forget the, uh, the Bullhorn app and you can participate um, in the conversation as well. So until next week, please stay safe, stay hydrated.